My dear parishioners, one of the beautiful things in Lent, about Lent, from a devotional standpoint, is that every day of Lent has a proper mass. So when we celebrate the Feast of the Saint, such as yesterday with Saint Gregory, then the Lent Mass is commemorated. And on the days during Lent, such as today, tomorrow, the next day, there are periods, then we say that Lent Mass. It's in Bible investments, and again, it is a proper Mass, a penitential spirit to the proper of the Mass. But also what is unique is that there are many Gospels and Epistles that we don't have during the rest of the year that are in these different Masses for Lent. So I would recommend on a day that you're not able to attend Mass, use your Missal and at least read the Epistle and Gospel for that day. Now today, for instance, we had, at being Ember Wednesday, we had two Epistles, or two readings, both from the Old Testament, one about the fast of Moses for 40 days, when he went up on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, and the second one about the fast of Elias for 40 days. But many different interesting readings from the Old Testament. There also are, again, Gospels, sections of the Gospel that we don't have during the year, such as this past Monday, one of my favorite, Monday of the first week of Lent, is taken from the 25th chapter of St. Matthew. And our Lord tells the story about judgment. The Son of Man will come with his angels, and all of those who have ever lived will be gathered before him. And then just as a shepherd, at the end of the day, separates the goats from the sheep, so will the Son of Man separate the good from the wicked. And the good he will place on his right hand, and the wicked on his left. And to the wicked he will say, Depart from me, you accursed ones. Because I was hungry, and you did not give me to eat. I was thirsty, and you did not give me to drink. Naked, you did not clothe me. Without shelter, you did not shelter me. In prison, you did not visit me. And so forth. Our Lord goes through the, what we call the corporal, works of mercy. And they will say, Lord, when did we see thee hungry and thirsty, and did not minister to thee? And he will say to them, as long as you did not do it, for the least of my brethren, neither did you do it for me. And then to the, to the good, he will say, Come, blessed of my Father, into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, because I was hungry, and you gave me to eat, thirsty, and you gave me to drink, etc., etc. And the good, the just, will say, Lord, when did we see thee hungry, and gave thee to eat, and thirsty, and without clothing, or shelter, or in prison? And he will say to them, as long as you did it, for the least of my brethren, you did it for me. Now this gospel is very interesting for a couple of reasons. One, that is where we find the enumeration of the seven corporal works of mercy in Scripture. And also, because our Lord points out that our salvation is contingent upon fulfilling the works of mercy, at least to some degree. So this brings up a good question, which the Catechism answers, and the question is, are we obligated to perform the works of mercy? We're obligated to fulfill the Ten Commandments. We're obligated to obey the six precepts of the Church. But what about the works of mercy? And the Catechism answers it in this way. It says we are obligated to fulfill the works of mercy to the degree of our ability and the need of our neighbor. So in other words, the, the more our neighbor is in need of charity, the more we're obligated. If there's only a slight need, we're not obligated, or not so much. And then, of course, our obligation depends on um, our ability to help someone. So this is something you might think of doing during Lent, and that is almsgiving. How can I help the poor? What can I do for those who are in need? Um, alms is one of the three great works of penance, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. 
So that's something that would be part of our Lenten practice, to practice the works of mercy. Uh, unfortunately, it used to be that you could help, uh, there would be Catholic organizations. And now, of course, these are run by the Novus Order Church, and you don't know, you know, charitable organizations, if I get, how will the money be used, etc. But where you can determine that it would be truly a work of charity, that would be a good thing to keep in mind. However, the spiritual works of mercy are even more important. Our Lord enumerates in this Gospel, the 25th chapter of St. Matthew, the selection we read on Monday's Mass, our Lord enumerates the corporal works of mercy. But since the soul is even much more valuable than the body, so the spiritual works of mercy are more important than the corporal works of mercy. And so here's a good question, how many of us can name them off? Or at least you could probably name some of them, maybe even most of them. But we should know them, number one. And then second, strive to put them into practice, to fulfill them. So the spiritual works of mercy are to admonish the sinner, to instruct the ignorant, to counsel the doubtful, to comfort the sorrowful, to bear wrongs patiently, to forgive all injuries, and to pray for the living and the dead. Now some works of mercy might be a combination of both corporal and spiritual. You could help someone materially or temporally, and that may also help them spiritually. But let's go through the spiritual works of mercy and ask ourselves, how can I fulfill them? To admonish the sinner. Imagine if someone is on the path to hell, and by a charitable admonition, you cause that person to think about what he or she is doing, and to change his life, and maybe even save his immortal soul by that admonition. Of course, parents and teachers have this duty, have an opportunity to do this duty more so. Um, parents with their children, to admonish the children when they do wrong, teachers with the children in the classroom, etc. But all of us, when we have that opportunity, remember always in a charitable and humble way. But sometimes if we say nothing, the person may take it that we approve of what he or she is doing or believes or and so forth. So to admonish the sinner, to instruct the ignorant. Here again, religious teachers in school teaching their children the catechism. What a wonderful work of mercy. And for any Catholic to have that opportunity to teach the faith. And one of the ways we can do this is by giving good literature to someone. You maybe would send a pamphlet something to someone, to a relative, etc., ask the person to read it, is a way of fulfilling that work to instruct the ignorant. To counsel the doubtful. We all have times when we need counsel. We, we are in a quandary what to do, and a good friend who will, is able to see clearly what should be done, and giving good counsel, that's a great work of mercy. So we also should strive to do that to others, to counsel the doubtful and to comfort the sorrowful, to comfort those who are bereaved, who are going through a difficult time. This is a spiritual work of mercy. The next two are very important, to forgive all injuries and to bear wrongs patiently. So to bear wrongs patiently is uh, in itself a good example showing that example to others, that we bear, without complaint, this cross, this wrong. And we see this in the lives of the saints, where very often many examples could be given, where they were misjudged or um, accused of something they had not done, and they kept silence and they bore that humiliation or that wrong with patience and praying for the person who may be accused of that. So to bear wrongs patiently, in whatever way we can fulfill that, a great work of mercy. And the next one, even more important, to forgive all injuries. Because when we forgive someone who has injured us, it is more likely that God will forgive them, that they will obtain forgiveness from Almighty God, because we have forgiven them. And just like we say in the act of charity, I forgive all who have injured me, and I ask pardon of all whom I have injured. 
So forgiving all injuries is a, a very important work of mercy. It is very sad that even in among traditional Catholics, that sometimes there are rifts, there are divisions, there's somebody that maybe was hurt by someone else and they don't let go. They harbor that, they avoid that person. They, they leave the church after mass and they don't want to talk to that person to talk to all these others, but they steer clear of that person because they have failed to forgive an injury. So forgiving an injury makes us in a way like God because God forgives for those who are truly repentant. And then finally, to pray for the living and the dead. Um, prayer is such a, a powerful means of helping another person uh, to pray for the souls in purgatory, again, praying for the living. So think about the works of mercy. And these are not the only seven, whether corporal or spiritual. As the Catechism points out, anything that we do to relieve the body or spiritual need of our neighbor is a work of mercy. Now, when I was a boy going to Catholic school, we had a big thing in our school of uh, supporting the missions. And we would put money, we had like a little box for the missions, and you were so happy that you could put some money in, in the box for the missions. And again, sadly, nowadays we don't have this, but we have Catholic missions, although we do have uh, a mission in the Philippines, so that, that would be a way to practice that. But that's not specifically mentioned in the works of mercy, but it is. It is a wonderful work of mercy. It's corporal and material in that it's giving money for the missions, and it's also spiritual in that you're bringing the faith, uh, you know, uh, making it possible for a priest to visit these people. So let us think about that during Lent. We do penance, we give up something we like, several things. We, we mortify ourselves. It's a time of penance. We also spend extra time in prayer, especially uh, the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary, the stations of the cross, the chapter of our mother's sorrows, or Lenten meditation. But in addition to penance and prayer, there's also almsgiving. And almsgiving embraces all the works of mercy. Let us make certain that we are practicing them so that we will hear those words. As the Gospel from Monday said, our Lord says to the good, Come, blessed of my Father, into the kingdom of heaven, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For whatever you did, for the least of my brethren, was done for me. Let us remember that, that whatever we can do for another, whether it's one of these works of mercy that we can enumerate, seven corporal or seven spiritual, or something else, that it is done for the love of our Lord and merits great.